Sports. We can't feel sorry for ourselves. Injuries, unfortunately, are a part of the game, and we have to uh, step it up. And you know what? It'd be easy if you want to toss in the towel right now, or we're going to find out what kind of fighters we have and how we step up. After a sobering night last night, the Marlins try to bounce back against the Los Angeles Dodgers. This would be game two of a three game weekend series. D. Gordon's without his running buddy. Giancarlo Stanton is out four to six weeks. How will the Marlins respond? Can somebody step up against Clayton Kershaw? And it's Tom Kohler at home where he is very, very good. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton for the Marlins. It is an incredibly rough patch in terms of wins and losses, and then obviously in terms of a big loss last night in Giancarlo Stanton. Rich, when this home stand started, we talked about the tough teams the Marlins would be playing St. Louis, Los Angeles, and then San Francisco. We didn't factor in that the Marlins would lose the big guy. It's going to take everybody else to try to step up and do their job uh, because nobody's going to roll over. The games will still be played. You and I thought we detected something earlier in the game that was prior to his last at bat you saw the swing you saw Giancarlo kind of flick that hand flick that wrist a little bit so it was bothering him probably midway through the ball game uh, while he was taking some swings good game by Brett Anderson of the Dodgers and then that last at bat boy you could see everything go with the grimace and his expression. The numbers as they said and it was a broken hammock bone in that left hand four to six weeks there will be some surgery involved. The raw numbers are number one impressive for Stanton and number two troubling for the rest of the Marlins. Well yes troubling and, and you feel so bad for Big G. He's not going to be able to participate in the all star game. Uh, we were so looking forward to him. I'm sure everybody else was to see him in the home run derby as well. It's the type of injury. I don't want to ever diminish an injury, but the hammock bone is a bone that you don't need in your hand. It doesn't require a lot of rehab. Hopefully, it'll be even quicker. If you're looking at four to six weeks, let's hope it's four. All right. Opportunities now, right? I mean, someone's got to step up. Yeah. Yeah, you have guys like Ozuna, like Christian Yelich, uh, even a Jeff Baker who may get some playing time a little bit more now. You have those opportunities for those guys to step up a little bit. Pitching matchups to come, Marlins and Dodgers to come. Clayton Kershaw comes calling. Tom Kohler will be waiting. It's Marlins, it's Dodgers, and it's next.
center field. P. Dub in the house, Preston Wilson. All Craig right. Mitterveni. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rich. Uh, and uh, with Preston Wilson, uh, first, a quick thought on Giancarlo's injury, how it affects the ball club. Well, I think now everybody's just got to pull together. You're not, you don't have that big guy to lean on anymore and wait for him to hit the ball out of the ballpark. You got to do the little things. You got to hit and run. You got to move guys over. You have to really pay particular to the fundamentals and pull together as a squad. All right, matchup today. It won't be easy. No G, and now you go up against the ace, Clayton Kershaw, who was 21-3 and three last year, but is a surprising 500 so far. I, I like having that ace guy on the mound when your team is trying to find something because everybody gets up to face this. The MVP's got three Cy Young Awards, four-time All-Star, Gold Glove winner. He's got a no-hitter in his back. These are games that you pull yourself together as a squad for because this is the this is the pinnacle of pitching right here. This right. is the guy that you want to beat. And as for the Marlins, they'll go with Tom Kohler, who goes after his sixth win on the season. And he is one and two with four starts at a no decision against the Dodgers in his career against L.A. Same thing, same theme. Tom Kohler is a guy that's a bulldog. He likes having that challenge. He likes being that guy that people look over because he has a chip on his shoulder. I expect him to want to have a great showing against Clayton Kershaw today. All right, the righty Tom Kohler, the lefty Clayton Kershaw, the matchup as the Dodgers take on the fish in game two of this three-game series. Coming up next, right here on Fox Sports Florida. Let's go places by Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's largest Cubota dealer. Visit us at FloridaCoastEQ.com. By AutoNation, save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit AutoNation.com. Afternoon in Miami. Afternoon to all of you. The Dodgers, the Marlins. This would be game two of a three-game weekend series. Here come the Dodgers. Don Mattingly's bunch. It's brought to you by J.M. Lexus. The explosive Jock Peterson leads it off. Howie Kendrick, four hits last night. Justin Turner is having a great year. He's at third. Adrian Gonzalez in the cleanup spot. And Marlon killer Andre Ethier is back in the lineup. Miami guy, Yasmani Grandal will do the catching. Kike Hernandez, former fish. Jimmy Rollins is at short. Clayton Kershaw slotted ninth. Rich, I kind of agree with uh, with Preston. Certainly, in the case of Tom Kohler, I, I can't think of a better guy to be out there on a on a day like today, when you have found out you've lost your a big hitter, uh, and you're also facing 
uh, one of the best in Clayton Kershaw. We've seen Tom Kohler over the uh, last couple of years step up in moments like this, and he has that opportunity. And also will be making his last start as a 28-year-old. He turns 29 in a couple of days. And he's making his first start in almost a couple of weeks. Remember, he missed a start with a sore neck. No issues. It kind of dissipated after two or three days. He stayed on his normal routine. And if it's his normal routine, he'll pitch very well because this is a ballpark and an environment that he enjoys. Don Mattingly and the Dodgers still in first place, 42 and 33 this is his fifth season a pair of National League West titles his last two years first pitch brought to you by pinch a penny it's a fastball from Kohler at 93 miles an hour Jack Peterson fouls it off counts 0 and 1 Jock Peterson in the ball game last night was introduced to the dimensions here at Barlins Park he doubled off the very top of the wall in straightaway center field Thought it was a homer. Hit a ball to the top of the wall and left. Thought that one should have been gone as well. 0 2. And Kohler comes right out of the chute and strikes out Jock Peterson. Boy, a great way to start three terrific pitches from Tom Kohler. Let's check on the BMW defense with Yelich, Ozuna, Ichiro starting in right field. This afternoon, Miguel Rojas is at third base. Enter Berea, D. Gordon, Jeff Baker around the infield, JT behind the plate. Howie Kendrick, a hit machine last night. And Kohler starts him with a strike. Four hits last night for Kendrick, including an RBI. Up to his average 10 points, up to 286. Kohler's just pouring across strikes right now. It's 0 2. Count the three game series when the Marlins were in Los Angeles. Howie Kendrick is 10 for 18 against the Marlins this year. And there are some Dodgers that had good series in LA and nice nights last night. Tom Kohler, six pitches, two strikeouts. And here comes Justin Turner. No sense wasting any time. Again, three quality pitches. There's that two seamer. Look at that pitch dive down and in. To get Kendrick. So Kohler, the new Rochelle native. Turner to left. Hits it well and deep and gone. Justin Turner's 11th. Well, we talked about Justin Turner last night, a guy who a couple of organizations gave up on. And boy, has he blossomed as the Los Angeles Dodgers. 11th home run of the year. He was saying to himself, OK, Tom Kohler's been aggressive, a lot of strikes, and he had an aggressive approach. A one to nothing start for the Dodgers. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. Lifts that one foul and out of play. Gonzalez, certainly one of the bigger names in a Dodger uniform. We've got Puig, Andre Ethier, of course, the starting pitcher, Clayton Kershaw. A one is down low. I guess. But as we found out in Los Angeles and last night, and even stretching at the end of last year, guys like Justin Turner. Scott Van Slyke. There's a another group of players in Dodger uniform. Uh, you want to say they're a supporting cast, but lately they've been a, in starring roles. You could even throw in a Howie Kendrick. I mean, he's a good role player. He, he's a he's a terrific major league player. He has been for a long time, but you could throw him in that mix too. Kohler misses in, and it's three and one. To Gonzalez. There's Kendrick and Van Slyke. Van Slyke got the scoring started with a two run homer last night. And of course, he had the big series in LA, including a walk off homer when the two teams met for a three gamer in May. When you're as aggressive as Tom Kohler was, those first two hitters, 
and then you get that first pitch fastball hit out. You kind of change your thinking just a little bit. Count stays at three and two. And Justin Turner, the guy that the New York Mets essentially let walk. He was non tendered. Last year, a free agent with the Dodgers. Down goes Gonzalez. Three strikeouts and a solo homer by Justin Turner. And here comes Clayton Kershaw. And that's exactly where Clayton Kershaw was last year, on top of the world, on top of the baseball world. National League MVP, his third Cy Young. And he goes tonight in Miami. D. Gordon, Christian Yelich, Danny Echeverria for the fish. Kershaw comes in with a very un Kershaw like 5 and 5 record and an ERA of 3.33. Gordon swings and misses. D. Gordon's numbers, the 356, has him back on top of the National League hitting charts. Paul Goldschmidt at 352. Kershaw with a fastball in. It's 0-2. Of course, these guys were teammates last year, so D. Gordon has never faced Clayton Kershaw. In fact, the Marlins haven't faced Clayton Kershaw since. That date right there, the 22nd of August, 2013. Well, in this ballpark, he's 2 and 0 with a 126 ERA against the Marlins. 5 and 1 lifetime with an ERA under 2. So, not an easy assignment. But one of the things that's gotten him in a little trouble, I mean, you look at his numbers, and they, they are great numbers for a lot of pitchers. Leads the league in strikeouts, but he's made just a few too many mistakes this year. Gordon to right, Ethier is there. He makes a catch. Well struck by Gordon. Miami's lineup without John Carlos Stanton, brought to you by JM Lexus. Got D. Gordon in the leadoff spot. Christian Yelich is in left. Danny Echeverria in the three spot. Marcelo Zun is in center. Jeff Baker hits fifth. JT Real Muto up to six. Ichiro's in right. Miguel Rojas, the former Dodger, just called up from New Orleans, is at third base with Kohler slotted ninth. Then here is Christian Yelich. And he bounces one up the middle. There is Rollins. No chance to get Yelich, who has an infield hit.
Tell you what, any hit by a left-hander off this left-hander, well, you you file that away, you remember it. And we all talked about prior to this game. Preston talked about it with Greg Minervini. You and I talked about it. With the absence now of John Carlo, the Marlins are going to have to do all those little things just right to put together some runs. And Chabria swings and misses. Looked like he was trying to take a shot at the right side with Gonzalez holding Yelich on. And Chabria was in the three spot last night. Not a spot you're familiar seeing him. It certainly not something that he's familiar with. And Chabria one for four, drove in a run last night. And that'll be, I, I would expect, a work in progress. Trying to figure out the lineup that works without Stan. Etch got jammed, dumps it to right. Yelich around second, headed for third. Ethier's throw is not in time, and it gets away. It's in the well. The game is tied. Yelich will score. Etcheverria will go to third base. A costly throwing error gives not only the Marlins a run, but pushes Echeverria to the base he was headed to and one more. An absolutely great job of base running by Christian Yelich, too. This ball not hit hard. It's blooped into right field. Yelich, a couple of looks, he knows exactly where Ethier's playing and takes off. By doing that, he draws the throw from Ethier. The throw gets by Turner into the camera well. And everybody moves up an extra base. So good base running by Yelich started that whole thing. Yelich trying to keep his helmet on at one point. <laughs> Don't worry about that helmet. Willie Mays didn't worry about it at all. Uh, that's good stuff from Yelich. And that's certainly the, the Dodgers right now. I don't know if they were looking at the replay. And they were. Maybe they felt somebody a missed the base or they wanted to see where Echeverria was when the ball went out of play. As it is Echeverria stays at third and Ozuna's in the box infield back and Miami has a chance to take the lead right out of the shoot. This is where that uh, contact is so important with the infield back. Certainly Echeverria will be going on contact. Great job by Yelich to force the issue. That ball squirts away. Here comes Echeverria. And just like that, Miami has two runs against Clayton Kershaw and a 2 1 lead. All of a sudden, the Dodgers have come out of the shoot playing a little sloppy baseball, and the Marlins are taking advantage of it. The error, now a wild pitch. This ball scoots under the, the wickets of Grandal and alertly a great angle Echevria has here. Look at this. See, he sees that angle. He sees where the ball is. That's why he got such a great jump. Good camera work. Good work in the truck. And Ozuna takes in from Kershaw. The count is two and one. The Marlins are trying to do something tonight that no other team has ever been able to do against Clayton Kershaw. He's lost his last two starts, giving up three runs in each of those games. He's never lost three consecutive starts in his career. Wow. A career that has seen him go 103 and 54. And Ozuna swings and misses, and he strikes out. Kershaw does a lot of that. 132 strikeouts. That's the best in the National League. Well, you see the last two starts three earned runs in both of them. Not a lot of run support high strikeout totals. Averaging 10 strikeouts last three starts. And here's Jeff Baker who. Is as familiar with Kershaw's anybody in the lineup. For Miami tonight. Pitches away and it's 2 and 0. Oh.
Baker four for 14 with a homer. Against Kershaw. Native of University Park in Dallas area. Baker's bouncer up the middle Rollins there again this time he spins and makes the throw. And gets the outs. But for Miami two quick runs. And a 2 1 lead. por West Kendall Toyota. An interesting start to this ball game. Marlins have a 2-1 lead. It's Clayton Kershaw and Tom Kohler tonight. And Kohler himself a fascinating first. I mean, he struck out three. He looked dominant in his first two hitters. Six pitches, two strikeouts. And on his seventh pitch, Justin Turner belted one over the wall and left. Andre Ethier is Monty Grandal, Kike Hernandez. Well, you think about it too, Rich. You have Kershaw and Kohler each with five wins on the season. Yeah, Kohler's last start was a, a big moment personally for him and a nice win for the Marlins. Kohler was born in the Bronx, so facing the Yankees and going seven innings, giving up just the one run is pretty special. But the neck was sore and it didn't get better, and so that ball game in Cincinnati, he was scheduled to pitch. Justin Nicolino stepped in and made his major league debut and stepped in very well. Ethier a ground ball believe it or not the Marlins got Ethier out. That has not been easy in that man's career. And so one out. In the second. There's just Bonnie Grandal. Dodgers kind of revamping their. Catching spot Grandal was born in Havana. And then moved. Into a Miami as a youngster. A star at the University of Miami. First round pick of the Reds back in 2010. Last year, his first full year in the big leagues. That was with the Padres. He and Yonder Alonso, the principal pieces in the trade that brought Matt Latos. From San Diego to Cincinnati. That doesn't happen too often. You have two guys who grew up in this area, played college ball together, get drafted by the same team. The Reds won 
a year earlier than the other and then get traded to the same team. <laughs> but Grandall has been a nice piece to the Dodgers catching duties. He's he's also offensively really helped out. He's had a couple of games this year. Where he's hit two home runs two two homer games. Fuller splits the plate with that fastball the count. Full at three and two. Some rain in baseball tonight. Rained out in Detroit. Rained out in Baltimore. This game would be awful wet where there no roof here. Because it's raining in downtown Miami. Yeah it doesn't uh, doesn't look too good outside as we uh, glance toward downtown Miami. And they're delayed. Because of weather in Philadelphia. Nationals and Phillies. 3 2 coming. They got him. You could hear Tim Timmons start that strike three call. And it caught Grandall just as he was stepping towards first. Well, another strikeout, another good two seamer from Tom Kohler. Strikeout number four. First Randall, the Dodger catcher, will be quick to note. Uh, pitch seven just out a bit. There's Kike Hernandez. Full of energy. Very versatile. Rolls it to short. Echeverria across the diamond in time. Kohler, one, two, three in the second, two, one. Miami. Dodgers as Vin Scully would say it's time for the Dodgers defense and we would love to give it to you brought to you by BMW Kike Hernandez in left Jock Peterson and Andre Ethier in that outfield Justin Turner Jimmy Rollins on the left side Kendrick Adrian Gonzalez on the right side and Yasmani Grandal behind the plate pretty good defense we talked about it last night. He had uncharacteristic throwing error by Andre Ethier helped push the Marlins across the plate a couple of times on their two hits back in the first. Here's Real Muto. Okay. JT Real Muto takes up. Each team comes in this game with 29 errors. The Dodgers now have 30. Ichiro and Miguel Rojas will follow. Real Muto fouls it back. It's a ball and a strike. The one thing with the absence now of Giancarlo that you can't do 
as as a player especially a guy in the middle of the order is all of a sudden try to do too much. That just, one is just do that over the head of Turner and real Muto's got himself extra bases. JT Real Muto turning on a Clayton Kershaw fastball. Out over the plate, up a little bit. We talked about that. Has been one of the issues this year for Kershaw is he doesn't make that kind of mistake too often. And when he's made it this year, he's gotten hurt. Now Ichiro. Oh, we've talked an awful lot about the players that have joined the team, the roster moves today, guys that have opportunities to step up. We haven't talked about Ichiro yet because the Marlins replace an All Star with a Hall of Famer. Ichiro this season, 71 games. Certainly in the next month, we'll see a lot of time out in right field. Well, we saw Ichiro really step up. When Christian Yelich went on the disabled list, it played left field just about every day. Kershaw buries a breaking ball. Now Ichiro has seen Kershaw, not a lot. Six at bats, three hits. Miguel Rojas on deck. So this is near the bottom of the order. Lead off double by Real Muto. And it's out. And this is not a case where it's, hey, get him over. Go station to station. Because it's problematic when you have the pitcher do up fourth in the inning. I think you'll take your chances though if Real Muto gets to third base with one out. If Ichiro is able to do that, you give yourself a few options with Rojas coming up. Two and two to Ichiro. Line drive finds the seats. Nice souvenir for that youngster. They got an each row foul ball. Line drive right at short. Well hit, but right at Rollins. So there's one out. With John Carlos Stan going on the disabled list, the Marlins looked at their minor leagues in New Orleans in particular and looked for a couple guys that were having solid years. Miguel Rojas, one. Cole Gillespie, an outfielder, another. Donovan Solano sent down to New Orleans. Here is Rojas for his first at bat as a Marlin. Last year, though, pretty good chunk of time with the Dodgers. And he shoots it up the middle, backhanded by Kendrick. He gets the out. That nearly was a base hit. Rojas is out. And it's up to Kohler now to try to get the, the run home. Last couple of balls have both been hit hard. One by each row, the one by Rojas. You can hear the rain, can't you? Yeah, it's thickening up out there. When you can't see the skyline from our seats, you know it's heavy. And it's been a while since we've had significant rain here. It just has arrived in the last couple of days. Kohler to center. Oh, he hit it right on the button off of Peterson's glove. 
lands behind them, and the Marlins have another run. Kohler, and I was just about to say he hit it too hard, but as it is, he hit it just hard enough. That might be one of the hardest hit balls we've seen Tom Kohler stroke, and he fooled Jock Peterson. Peterson took a step in. Three balls have really been hit hard off Kershaw. Great swing by Kohler. And all it cost Peterson was that step or two in. He tries to leap the balls off his club and he's charged with an error. So two outfield errors. Are pretty significant right now for the Dodgers. As Gordon fouls it back. But keep in mind that in both cases. One Yelich forcing the issue going first to third on a base hit to right and two Kohler hitting it right on the button. Every now and then you you make your own luck. Eat your throw trying to get Yelich went into the camera well. You just saw Peterson miss time his leap on the Kohler line. The other thing you do you make Kershaw throw more pitches. Just extends the inning. Don't know if that was the baseball gods chiming in. Gordon takes a strike. Good clap of thunder outside of Marlins Park. Die Mattingly looks on. He's happy there's a roof over Marlins Park. Yeah, but he's not real happy about his defense. Not right? happy about the defense, no. This is a guy that won nine gold gloves. Back, back, back. Kohler's picked. And he's out. That almost sounded like D. Gordon screaming back from the batter's box. Well, what an odd night so far. 3 1 Miami. Timmons, the home plate umpire, over the Kershaw move that picked off Tom Kohler. They're still talking about it. Let's listen. Back, back, back. That's D. Gordon. Yeah, the, the hitter can see exactly, and of course, D. Gordon having played with Kershaw. The question is if you're Tom Kohler, you just can't get picked off because you're not trying to steal, you're not going anywhere. What an adventurous two innings it's been for the Marlins at the plate. Three one lead. The Marlins have scored three runs. There have been no credited RBIs. Error, a wild pitch. Another error. Kohler's got a two run lead. He'll take into the third inning. And he gets a little extra time to warm up. Pace of play initiative. Remember, 
if you are a catcher involved in a play, either as a hitter or a base runner or a pitcher for that matter, especially a pitcher, you have a little more leeway to get out there and take your eight warm up tosses. Clayton Kershaw due up second. We remind you. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. Jimmy Rollins, then Kershaw, then Jock Peterson. Eight nine one for the Dodgers. And Rollins swinging from his heels. It's 0 and 1. Rollins, seven home runs. Of course, the Marlins saw. So much of him as a Philly. These are trying days in Philadelphia. Right, Sandberg resigning yesterday. Love to get uh, Jimmy Rollins' take on what has happened in Philadelphia. In the air to right, Ichiro is there. And he makes the catch. We check in with Craig Minervini with a very special catch. Oh boy, Rich. Happy 103rd birthday to Juan Miguel Diaz, who is here with his old Marlins jersey. Happy birthday to you and uh, congratulations. How's the day going? ¿Cómo te va el día? Felicidades. ¿Cómo te va el día hoy? Bien. Muy bien. He, he says he's very happy, emotional, very emotional. You got all your grandkids, seven great grandkids. And talk about the game of baseball. You've been watching it how long? Grew up in Cuba, big baseball fan. Why? Desde cuando tú estás mirando la pelota, ¿por qué te gusta la pelota mucho? Since you're a little guy. Dilo, habla, habla. Desde niño. Since he was a kid. He listens to Felo Ramirez all the time, obviously, and you try and watch the Marlins as well. And everybody is going to sing Happy Birthday to you. Are you ready to hear Happy Birthday? Te van a hacer, te van a cantar felicidades. Todo el mundo te va a cantar felicidades ahora, ¿ok? Yeah, he's very emotional for him, huh? Why? Very emotional. Well, uh, it's a long story. Yeah. Everybody's excited to be Everybody's out here excited. with the family to see you at 103. You're looking great. How about happy birthday? Ready? Let's give it to him. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. A special guest of Fox Sports Florida. Happy birthday. You look great. Juan Miguel Diaz, 103 and going strong. Good to see you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. I want to, I want to thanks, uh, thank Fox Sports for all of this, and, and especially to Steve Tello. If it wasn't for him, this wouldn't have happened. So thank you very much. I love the old school, too. The, the number five Marlins jersey. He's got his name on the back, and uh, I know your family's enjoying this. So good to see you. Happy birthday. Thank all right. You. Back to you guys. What a great moment. A hundred and three. And a tip of the cap to Steve Tello. Nice work. Jack Peterson is up. Two outs here in the third. Great job by Fox Sports Florida to make that happen. Tom Kohler gave up a Justin Turner homer, and that's it on this day. And he strikes out Peterson. The Dodgers go in order. The Marlins lead it 3 1.
the bottom of the third. Every Saturday is a selfie Saturday brought to you by H.H. Gregg. Submit your best selfie while watching a Marlins game. Use the hashtag Selfie Saturday Marlins. And we will select the best photo and feature it in the postgame show. T. Gord takes a breaking ball up. Christian Yelich and Danny Echeverria, top of the order. Marlins have scratched out three runs here on three hits. Two big Dodger errors. Gordon lands the left. It's deep. Kike Hernandez gets back to make the catch. Almost got it over his head. It'd have been a whole lot of trouble for Kike if that gotten over his head. Talked a lot about Clayton Kershaw. He has that downhill angle. You can watch him deliver. He's six foot four. Big 12 to six curve. Yeah, three Cy Youngs, four All Stars, an MVP. But he really started to get nasty when he incorporated a slider. He first came to the big leagues, he was fastball, curveball. Rick Honeycutt. A fellow lefty. Pitching coach for the Dodgers. It's a strike to Yelich. Christian sent a sharp ground ball up the middle. Rollins corralled it. Yelich with his speed had himself a hit. You go back to last inning, the Marlins have hit four balls in a row uh, very well off Kershaw. The line drive out of Ichiro. Rojas hit the ball well. On a ground ball out, the ball that Kohler hit. And the line drive out of D. Gordon. Kershaw knocks it down. Yelich has got himself another hit. Very athletic move to get the glove around there, but it didn't stick in the glove. Every once in a while, you'll see a pitcher make this play go behind his back. Even if the ball, if the ball goes up the middle, Rollins is there, but I, I don't think he throws out Christian Yelich. Kershaw tried to flag it down with the backhand and couldn't make the play. Yelich is two for two. Now Echeverria. Remember the dialogue that Dan Jennings had with the home plate umpire Tim Timmons that centered on Kershaw's move to first. Marlins as well. Had some questions about Brett Anderson's move to first in last night's ball game. Marlins had a pair of runners picked off. They need to save all those questions for Bob Davidson. That's right. The godfather of the Bach. The Bach father. The Bach father. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And Javier's base hit was to right. There's that big curveball. You know, Kershaw's windup where he puts the hand straight up. I don't know. For some of you kids, you may not have seen it. But remember the baseball episode where Bugs Bunny was pitching? And he has that very deliberate stretch, the old-fashioned one. Well, that was the Bugs Bunny curveball right there. That looked like it came out of a video machine. Rolled up the middle. Kendrick flips. Rollins turns. Got him. And Echeverria bounces into a double play. Marlins are done in the third, on to the fourth in Miami. It's a 3 1 Marlin lead.
tomorrow. Marlins and Dodgers, 110 start. You can pick up the Pepsi 4 for 74 pack. Celebrate Josh Beckett Day at the ballpark. Relive Josh Beckett's greatest moments as a Marlin. First 10,000 fans get a replica 2003 World Series ring, courtesy of Fox Sports Florida. Go to Marlins.com. And we'll see you tomorrow. Kids, of course, can run the bases in the Diamond Dash. Jack McKeon will be a pregame guest on Marlins Live at 12.30. Kendrick sprays it into right. Lead off hit for the Dodgers here in the fourth. Always good to see Jack when he's in town. D. Gordon. And uh, the Marlins trainers are coming out. And they're headed out to Mike Kozak, headed out to chat with D. Gordon. Gordon uh, with a face first dive, and it may be that he jarred something, knocked the wind out of himself. Nodding yes. Well, that's a good sign. And I yeah, think you can see in the shot, Gordon getting sick after the dive. So that pregame meal didn't quite sit well with. Here's Justin Turner. The one pitch Turner saw he hit out of the park. Breaking ball and he finds right field. Ichiro will pick it up not stopping as Kendrick. And just like that. The Dodgers have gone the other way to get two hits into right. And they're set up at the corners. With nobody out. So many times you, you see a hitter. Really go up there with an idea. And Turner with that hole open with. Baker holding the runner at first base just stayed back on that breaking ball. It put a full swing on it just stayed back and shot it through that hole. Now Gonzalez infield playing him to pull. It's one and oh. Toyota trend. On base percentage, the Dodgers, one of the very best in baseball. It's something the Marlins have struggled with. Gonzalez lines it to left. Yelich is there, lost it, did not catch it. And the Dodgers have a run. And runners first and second. Yelich approached for a moment and looked like he lost it in the lights. And that brief moment allowed it to skip before he got it with his glove. He had it. He knew it was in his direction. But once he lost it, all of a sudden the ball, which was sinking, had some severe topspin to it, dropped in front of him. And no honors recorded. The Dodgers first and second get that run in. We've so, seen left fielders every once in a while. We've seen each row when he's been out there every once in a while. Not pick up a ball out of the lights. Well, here is Ethier. No hitter on the planet has had more success against the Marlins than Ethier, save one. Jeff Cirillo. But among active players, Ethier is the king. And he hammered the fish in Los Angeles in that series. Came in with an active 383 average 
And that's 201 at bats worth. Liner, Gordon, got it. Safe at second. Boy, acrobatic. Five minutes after D. Gordon lost his lunch, he makes a play like that. They almost got Turner with Echeverria coming across the bat. Boy, he had to get Turner credit getting back as quickly as he did. But what a, a beautiful acrobatic play. We see D. Gordon do this all the time. And almost gets the double play. So a nice out to get for Kohler. 3 2 Miami on top. A pair of outfield throwing errors, a key for the Marlins to get their three runs, and a bit of a miscue and left. You talked earlier, Rich, about the uh, terrific game Tom Kohler had against the Yankees. Seven innings, gave up just one run. Had himself a 1 2 3 fourth inning. And in previous games, that fourth inning was an inning that had been giving him trouble. Is that because the fourth inning generally is the second time through the lineup? That's one way to, to think about it, yeah. Turner's at second, Gonzalez at first. And Grandal, who struck out in the second, takes away. Here are the numbers that you talked about. Randall, Echeverria, backhand, Gordon, turn. Oh! How about that? A Danny Echeverria and D. Gordon team up for a spectacular double play. And Miami holds on to their one run lead. Board is brought to you by Subaru of Pembroke Pines. Price, service, you're gonna love us. By Checkers, mix and match your famous Big Buford and Big Chicken Deluxe. Get two for five bucks, Checkers, it's in the bag. And by Lexus of Pembroke Pines. Price, service, selection, you're gonna love us. Marlins Park, Tom Kohler. D. Gordon feeling a little better. After that dive, turning in a spectacular turn of the double play. And it's 3 2 Miami. That is as good a double play as you're going to see. Kershaw hey. ah. gets a strike on Marcelo Ozuna. Ozuna struck out back in the first. 
It's the only strikeout that Kershaw has. So 132 strikeouts. It's one of the oddities of, of Kershaw's numbers going into this start. It's five and five. The ERA in the low threes. But he is still striking guys out at one of the best rates of his career. And he strikes out Ozuna. So he leads the majors with 133 strikeouts. T Mobile game changers. Dodger lefties Kershaw obviously has been compared to the great Sandy Koufax. Ahead of his pace in terms of ERA, opponent's average. Don't know if Koufax had gotten into that uh, Cy Young mode at that point. Remember, his career started late and ended early. There really wasn't, and you were signed by the Dodgers the year before the Major League draft was started. And Koufax was into his Cy Young mode at that point. There really weren't too many indicators that he was going to be that guy, really, his first year or two in the organization. No, early on, actually, when he came up, when they were still in Brooklyn, he was very wild. Uh, obviously, he had the stuff. He would have been marketable today at that time because he had a had a high ceiling. He threw hard, but he couldn't control it. And then everything fell into place. Watch the placement of this fastball, and it's perfect. Catches the plate in just enough of the knees. Think about Kershaw since his debut in 08. He leads. All major league pitchers in ERA, opponents batting average, whip, walks and hits and innings pitched, and winning percentage. That's the major leagues, not just the National League. That's how good this left hander has been. One and one to JT Real Muto, who doubled back in the second. He's averaging almost 12 strikeouts per nine innings, which leads the majors and his his career best percentage strikeout ratio. And he strikes out the side here in the fourth. So the Marlins with three runs against Kershaw is sharpening up as we get closer to the midway point.
Well, last night, Giancarlo Stanton, and we saw it on a variety of swings, suffering a fracture of the hammock bone in the left wrist. Now, this is a, a familiar fracture for baseball players, and it happens on swings, and sometimes it'll happen when you get hit on the back of the hand. It's a, a bone, as you can see, that kind of hooks back around, and it's one of those surgeries that, and rehab Tommy that once you fix the fracture there isn't a whole lot of rehab time because it's not a bone that you essentially use in baseball activities yeah it's uh, when when you say four to six weeks you're you're hoping sooner and and again uh, you and I aren't uh, of the medical profession by any means my oldest son had that injury in college and uh, was able to come back in about three three four weeks so it's it is a bone that your hand doesn't need and it's just a matter of strengthening the hand and getting back to some baseball activities when you're fully healed. Ball in a strike. Kike Hernandez is the hitter. Jimmy Rollins, Clayton Kershaw for the Dodgers. Bowler's breaking ball is fouled at the plate. The one thing about Kike Hernandez, he doesn't get cheated. He's a versatile player. He's played all three outfield positions this year with the Dodgers. He's played some shortstop. He's played some second base. Hernandez, a high, high fly ball. Yelich wanders back in and makes the catch. Tonight, Baseball Night in America returns. It's Cubs and Cardinals, 7 Eastern. It's when coverage begins on Fox and it streams live on Fox Sports Go. Cardinals are hot. The Marlins saw that firsthand. They've won four straight, including their win last night over the Cubs, who have dropped three in a row. Yeah, three to two. Cardinal win in 10 innings. Jimmy Rollins. Rollins flied out back in the third. Three runs, four hits for Miami, two runs, four hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Tom Kohler battling Clayton Kershaw. You know, in his four previous starts against the Dodgers for Todd Kohler, the record is one and two, but the ERA 2.91. So he's always pitched pretty well against his ball club. Of course, like cold hard facts, Jimmy Rollins all time against the Marlins games, second, hits, first, average, second, plate appearances, first. I'm guessing what Chipper Jones is first in games. I would say that's a pretty good guess. You know, you'd have to go with somebody with Atlanta, Philadelphia, somebody in that area. We're told in games and in average, Chipper Jones is number one. Chase Utley would have been a good guess, but not the correct one. Rollins is running, pitch to the plate. Kershaw swings, taps it to Rojas, fires across in time to get the out. And gives Jock Peterson an at bat with a runner in scoring position with two outs. Miguel Rojas can pick it over there, and he can pick it in short. You saw that earlier. He made a play earlier in the game. Kershaw also handles the bat well, and that's why Mattingly had to hit and run on. So here's Peterson who's just having a terrific year and I would guess if you're going to start the conversation for National League Rookie of the Year Peterson and Chris Bryant are probably the two guys you want to start with. Peterson with his 19 home runs 
Bartley is sixth in the National League. You talked earlier about on base percentage for the Dodgers, and here's a young player, fifth in the league in that department. Slugging percentage, seventh in the National League. That one foul back. Jack McKeon has set his. You think he has a, an iPhone? With yeah. Calendar hey, on Jack, his iPhone? By the way, that is not a lit cigar. That's just a prop. No smoking in the building. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Jose <laughs> Fernandez update. He's pitching. See, right now, Jack is wondering what we're saying about him. Nothing but good things. Nothing but good things. It's 1230 tomorrow, 1 o'clock game. Bouncer out towards short. Echevarria on to first in time to get the outs. And Kohler pitches around the Rollins hit and hangs on to a 3 2 lead. Way through at Marlins Park. Extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night, they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 86th All Star Game. Coverage begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Tuesday, July 14th on Fox. Ichiro leads it off against Clayton Kershaw. Fastball for a strike. Intro line to short back in the second. Got to be careful because it looked like in that last inning, Kershaw really got himself locked in. Struck out the side. Four strikeouts for the Major League's strikeout leader. Realize he he was on the same high school football team as Matthew Stafford. These two guys out of the Dallas area, still very close. So we've seen over the years, obviously a very good athlete is Clayton Kershaw. Struck him out, and you could hear Ichiro saying, No, 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 and he's still upset. And you 
rarely see this. Yeah, you, you do. You rarely do. I'm going to guess just by each row's reaction that that ball was off the plate. Let's see. Oh, it's close. And it's in. And Ichiro was right. That's why you rarely see that. Kershaw pounces on it and gets the out at first. And Rojas is out. Boy, you saw how quickly he got off the mound. We talked about his athletic ability. Got to that ball in a hurry and then just made an easy throw to get the out. Ichiro and Christian Yelich. Very similar in not saying too much to umpires, but when they do, most of the time they, they usually are right. Intro still got a pretty good sour look going. Here's Kohler, and right now one of the key at bats in this ball game was Kohler's in the second. Kershaw looked like he was going to escape. The leadoff double by JT Real Muto. He had two outs and he had Kohler at the plate. And Tom Kohler on a 1 0 pitch took a mighty rip and lined it to center. Jock Peterson, the Dodger center fielder, took a step or two in and then missed time to leap and had the ball bounce off his glove. And the Marlins had their third run of the ball game. For the young outfielder, just his second error of the year. Count two and two. Little tapper left side Rollins backhands and throws. Adrian Gonzalez can pick it and he does. One, two, three for the fish. Kershaw has retired eight straight. Jeff Baker getting it started. First full anniversary on an AT&T U-verse rewind. Remember this, Jeff Baker on May 4th. Oh, Yasiel Puy going hard into the wall. It was a walk-off, and the Marlins beat the Dodgers. And everybody was happy. It's a Casey McGee shot in there. 
Baker. And the fish on top here. And we check in with Craig Minervini. Craig. All right, thank you very much. It is the wife's tackle box right now. The Kristen Yelich tackle box is going for five hundred and fifty dollars. That is the clubhouse leader. Now wives come on in. Maria Phelps is here. Look at this though. A lot of bitters. Come on Mar Maria and with her little baby we saw in Pittsburgh. What is uh, going? What's the big traction from the uh, David Phelps tackle box? Well Swedish fish. That's one of his favorite candies. He loves the sweets. Cold stone and golf. He loves to golf. So Titleist Pro V1. Favorite golf ball. Pretty good. No dirty diapers. No dirty diapers. Well, that's good to see. Here's Jenna Mathis, wife of Jeff Mathis. And uh, what do you got that's getting? The Reese's must be a big hit. The Reese's are a big hit. The bat, everyone's loving. Got some cleats, beef jerky, uh, some flossers for your teeth. Look at that. That's something you don't normally see. Whoa. <laughs> flossers for your yeah. teeth. Tombstone, favorite movie. This all benefits Camp Aaron, and this is an annual thing the Marlon Wise have been doing for years. And obviously, each tackle box is personal to the uh, their husband. Things that they like in their life, things that you would like to bid on. I know it's a great uh, Camp Aaron's terrific, sending a lot of kids to camp down here in South Florida. Yeah, we went to visit recently, and we had such a great time. It's a great organization. We got to spend time with all the campers, and um, they do some really, really cool things with them. Is this tackle box better than Tom Kohler's, would you say, tackle box? I would. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what about this, Ashley? What, what do you got in Tom's tackle box? Um, okay, we have a small bottle of Jägermeister. Um, all six Rocky movies on Blu-ray, Swedish Fish, Superman Socks. Um, looks like we have an opening day locker oh, yeah, game card neat. signed. Very neat. Uh, a bat. A bat. What uh, is this here? This is a Jon Snow Game of Thrones okay. figurine. And um, only a small bottle. Is that for just an evening amount? Um, you know, we try to... For a week? <laughs> exactly. I didn't want to get anything too big. Rocky. This is a good story for yes, Tom Kohler. Great underdog story. Um, he used to watch Rocky instead of cartoons when he was a baby, so... Um, Sounds good. That has to be in there for Thank sure. Thank you very much. The tackle box goes uh, through, I guess, the seventh inning tonight and raising a lot of money. Yep. Good stuff. Yep. Yep. All right. How about that? The uh, Rocky story, guys. Uh, it's uh, a <laughs> chip on his shoulder. That's how Tom Kohler has always been able to get it done. All right. And right now, he's got a 3 2 lead over the Dodgers. Facing Justin Turner, who rolls one out at Chavaria's way. Busy day for Miami shortstop. And he gets the out. Kohler, two quick outs here in the sixth. There's Adrian Gonzalez. You could just picture uh, Tom's dad sitting down with him watching Rocky. Rolf? Yeah, you can picture that. Someday, kid, that'll be you. <laughs> I'd like to interchange a couple of those tackle boxes. You know, mix mix the Jägermeister with the Pro V1s. Kohler opens with a strike to Gonzalez, RBI single. Justin Turner solo homer in the first. Gonzalez is RBI hit in the fourth. And that's it for the Dodgers. Check swing. Kohler's got it. What a and nice inning. Flip it to first. That's a six pitch inning. Tom Kohler with a 3 2 lead over Los Angeles.
Every Saturday, Selfie Saturday, brought to you by H.H. H. Gray. Give it your best selfie while watching a Marlins game. And then hashtag it, Selfie Saturday Marlins. We'll select the best photo and feature it in the postgame show. We need to do a, a selfie up here while we're broadcasting. But we do that before the game on, on uh, television, don't we? Does that not count? That doesn't count. Not the same. Got to get a selfie stick. This is D. Gordon he swings and misses. D. Gordon is 0 for 2. He's lined out twice. Lined out to right, lined out to left. Gordon involved in a spectacular double play with Danny Echevarria. And that was a, a few minutes after a Dive and shallow right lost his pregame meal. Counts two and one. Clayton Kershaw looking for win number six, looking to avoid his third consecutive loss in three consecutive starts. It has never happened in his career. He's lost two in a row. He didn't get rocked in those two starts. But he was mortal. He gave up three runs to Texas, lost five to three, three runs in Chicago against the Cubs, and lost four to two. To left, that one's well hit. Hernandez won't get it. And it's going to the track. Gordon's not stopping. On his way to third. Oh, the brakes come on. And he gets back to second. Kike Hernandez hustled to get it right at the track. We saw him chase Kike Hernandez back in the third inning with a line drive. He plays him as shallow as we've seen a left fielder play him. This ball jumps over his head. But if not for the quickness of Kike, his infield ability came across here. And then his strong throwing arm, if not for that, D. Gordon ends up at third. He was thinking about three. He has the play in front of him. But he sees Kike come up with a really strong throw. Leading hitter in the National League, 16th double. And now Yelich, who is two for two. Shorts the bunt, pitches up. Miami piecing together a lineup without John Carlos Stan. Yelich up in the two spot. And the Danny Echevarria is behind Yelich. Big rip by Yelich. The ball in a strike. Kershaw is so quick from the time the glove gets down to his waist to the time it gets to the plate that it's really tough to, to get much of a jump off. Very difficult to get a read. This time a pause and a look back. And a strike. Yelich missing the breaking ball. You talked about his last couple of uh, losses. The one to the Cubs, he gave up two home runs. Bryant and Caesar hit home runs against him. The home run ball has kind of hurt him this year. Clayton Kershaw is allowed 11. One, two, up the middle. Into center field, late start. Gordon gets a stop sign. Peterson comes up with a throw, and Miami has runners at the corners. And Yelich is three for three, and that one right back at Kershaw. We talked about certain players. All right, here's your opportunity to step things up a little bit. Christian Yelich has certainly done that today. His third hit, plus some outstanding base running earlier in the game. And so here's Echeverria, and the Marlins have an opportunity to add on. Gordon double, a Yelich single. Echeverria base hit in the first, bounce into a double play in the third. Believe it or not, Rich, Yelich's base hit 
was just the second on this homestand with runners in scoring position. The Marlins were swept by the Cardinals. Lost last night to the Dodgers. And today they face the NL MVP in Clayton Kershaw. Counts 0 and 2 on Echeverria. You got speed at the corners, but remember the Marlins have had three runners picked off in this series. Two last night and one today. And all three were picked off by a lefty starter at first base. Kershaw got Tom Kohler in the second. That one almost popped out of the glove of Gonzalez. That's an easier move to detect from the plate than it is from first because Kershaw starts to really lean towards first when he's going there. You can't really detect that where Yelich is standing. Check swing, he went. And a strikeout of Echeverria. Tim Timmons emphatically telling Miami's dugout that he went. Well, we get a good side view here. Man, that's always close. Always close. Now Kershaw is smelling his way out of this thing. Strikes out Echeverria. Now he gets Ozuna, and he has punched out Ozuna twice. The Marlins last night struck out 16 times. Ozuna looking for contact and trying to keep it off the ground up the middle. Would you see in this situation? Yelich on the move at first. You, you just can't because of uh, the way Kershaw delivers to the plate. You just don't want to get picked off. You, you want to give Ozuna an opportunity to get the run in from third. Possibly when it gets to two strikes. Maybe later in the count. Well here's two strikes. And he has eaten up Marcelo Zuna today. Now a signal from the Dodger dugout pushes Grandal in front of the plate. Giving the signals. The thing you have the dynamic you have. That could work in your advantage. Is D Gordon at third. If Yelich is able to draw a throw at second. There's the throw the lead and if you're the runner at third I'm sure Lenny Harris has told D Gordon if that happens if Yelich takes off now you have to watch Grandall if he throws through if the ball heads to second then you take off tough decision because you have to make sure that throw is higher than Kershaw as well if you get a throw from Gonzalez on a pickoff. O2 is out. 96 miles an hour in that fastball. Last night, Ozuna in his last two at bats struck out, and he has struck out his first two times here. Baker's on deck. There's one out. Yelich at first, Gordon at third. And Ozuna strikes out again. Wow, three strikeouts for Marcelo Zuna and Kershaw strikes out Echeverria and Ozuna. Let's see if this is the slider. Yeah, it is. Down and in. He's gotten Ozuna with that all day. So here's Baker, who hit it hard in the first. Ground ball up the middle and a nice play by Rollins. And then he struck out in the fourth.
Kershaw had one strikeout through the first three innings. He has six so far through the next almost three. Hasn't walked anybody and he draws a visit from Yasmani Grandal. Three two Marlins bottom six. I'll tell you a big play in this inning. As Kike Hernandez catching up to the ball just at the start of the track. Wheeling and throwing and keeping Gordon from a triple. Ball and a strike. As it was with the base hit, D. Gordon now extends his hitting streak to nine games. 111 base hits. Ball and a strike. Baker behind in the count now one and two. The one thing that Kershaw does so well that big curveball and then he rides that fastball up. We've seen him throw 96 here in this inning. Neither pitcher has walked a hitter. Kershaw's got seven strikeouts. Kohler's got five. And Gordon is on the alert at third. Went fastball away, two and two. That's the pattern. The throw to first. Gordon broke from third and then hits back. Now the 2 2. It's out. And Baker, two good takes. Full count 3 2. Now Yelich will be on the move, but has to make sure that Kershaw's headed to the plate. Yeah, really a nice AP. It's been a good battle between both these veterans, Kershaw and Baker. Kershaw can go to any one of his three pitches. He can stay fastball, he can go slider down and in, the way he struck out Ozuna, or he can try curveball. Yelts will get a good jump. Gonzalez not holding him here. 3 2 coming. And Baker stays alive. He went with the slider. I told you at the outset that no hitter in a Marlin uniform has more experience against Kershaw than Bake. Came in with four hits and 14 at bats. He's 0 for 2 in this one. Another 3 2. And another foul ball. Well, slider, that time fastball. And the battle continues. One big difference between Kohler and Kershaw right now pitch count. Kershaw at 86, Kohler at 67. This Neither. has been a stressful inning for Kershaw. Yeah. He hadn't walked anybody yet. Now the 3 2. Got him. Sharp slider. And Baker strikes out. Kershaw strikes out three in a row to get out of the sixth.
earlier in the game where you introduced you to a 103 year old Juan Diaz and David Sapp's president. You got a little special present for him. We're going to give him live. We do. Anyone who was born before the Titanic sunk, I feel like should have their own jersey or his own jersey in this case. He's going to be our special 103. All right, let's let's get now. Juan doesn't know this is coming. Happy birthday! You can start singing your happy birthday again, everybody. And go ahead. Birthday, David Sampson. Abuelo, Marlins. De los Marlins, David Sampson. Uh, uniformo authentica. Authentico uniforme para ti. 103 for you. 103 para ti. That's old. This is new este because viejo, you're new. Este nuevo porque tú eres nuevo. Sí. Muchas felicidades. Gracias. And can you pitch? Tú puedes pitchar. Young and middle. Because for your birthday, we were going to have you be a Marlin no, wearing 103. Quiere que tu piche un un piche un lanzamiento. Congratulations! Happy birthday again. Happy birthday. 103. You got a new jersey to wear. Wow, very nice. So he's got a throwback and he's got a new jersey as well. Andre Ethier at the plate. Tom Kohler into the seventh. Eat your 0 for 2. You got Nismani Grandal and Kike Hernandez. Gracias for you. Look, that, for that. Wow, you have more hair than I do. Nice. I'm going to put that right here. Tom Kohler misses up. What a special birthday That's that is. He's got to go old school to new school. A big fellow Ramirez fan. Get your fouls at the plate, and it's two and two. Well, we focus certainly on Kershaw last inning. Kershaw has now struck out eight. Tom Kohler has given up just the two runs on five hits, no walks for Kohler, and five strikeouts. One's out of play. You and I both kind of agreed at the beginning of the game that uh, any pitcher that the Marlins have, any starter that could step up in a situation like this would be Tom Kohler. Center field hit well. Back goes Ozuna. Track makes the catch. In the triangle. And out in the seventh. Half price Tuesday is coming up. A Miami Herald half price Tuesday. Giants in town. Marlins and Giants at 710. Half price Lexus Legends Platinum tickets, where you get great discounts on tickets in several other categories. Go to Marlins.com today. Now Grandal, who was struck out and bounced into what was a spectacular double play to end the fourth inning at Chavaria. A lunging, sliding stop, and Gordon, an incredible turn. Well, a couple of great curveballs. That pitch has been there for Tom Kohler all day. And he starts Grandal out with two really good ones. Ground ball, Rojas got a glove on it. And Grandall around first will hold there. Against the shift, the Marlins were swung towards right, and Rojas was away from the line. And Miguel, the former Dodger, look how far he has to go. Well, the tough part about that, when you shift a little bit, it's imperative that that pitcher hits his spots all the time. That pitch, good pitch, fastball, but it was out over the plate. And Grandall, because it was away, hit it that way. Kike Hernandez was scheduled. Yasiel Puig emerges from the dugout. We've seen D. Gordon vomit on the field 
in the ball game and not look like he's at 100 percent and he came back behind the mound there and was crouched behind the mound and he still doesn't look all together there but what a game he's had if he's feeling great or if he's feeling ill and what a competitor D Gordon is the last couple of nights tough losses he's been the guy that you look into the, the dugout after the game has been completed and for a long time the last couple of nights you've seen D Gordon sitting there just contemplating some tough losses and the way the ball club is played. Yasiel Puig. Now remember, Puig out of the Dodger lineup for four days. A callus on his left hand ripped off. He's had trouble swinging the bat. He gets the at bat here with a runner at first and one out. A little extra tape on the bottom and around the knob of the bat. Count is two and one. It's a problem that oftentimes arises in spring training with all the batting practice and all the swings. Kohler with a great breaking ball. Two and two. There's that curveball we talked about earlier. He threw a good one to Puig. Jimmy Rollins on deck. Kohler, 2 2. Slow tapper. Rojas charges gloves. Has to hurry, and he does, and he gets him. Miguel Rojas hustling. Just gets Puig at first. The well, Dodgers he, are going to look at it. He knows Puig can get up that line quickly. And Rojas, with a little extra tap, knew he had to get something extra on the throw. Former Dodger. He right can play there. all over the infield. Right there, that little tap. But then he got something extra on the throw. And he's out. The Dodgers will not challenge. Puig is out. And Kohler needs to get Rollins to get out of this seventh. Trying to keep the lead. Grandall the runner at second. Rollins is one for two. Rollins to center. It's deep. Ozuna has room. And he's got it. And Kohler gets through the seventh. Hangs on to the lead. Miami three. Los Angeles two.
in Miami as night starts to fall. The Marlins have a one run lead over the Dodgers. And to the bottom of the seventh, Andre Ethier goes from right field to left. Yasiel Puig, who pinch hit for Kike Hernandez, stays in the game. He's in right. Clayton Kershaw still on the mound. Changes speeds, gets a strike on JT Real Muto. But both pitchers have had uh, good curveballs today. And through his seven innings, Tom Kohler, 84 pitches, sitting nicely with a good pitch count. Real Muto into center field. His second hit, a leadoff hit here in the seventh. You got Ichiro, Miguel Rojas scheduled, and then Tom Kohler's spot. It's like Carter Caps is up in Miami's bullpen. Here's Ichiro. Yeah, I think you have to look at it this way, even though that pitch count is pretty good for Tom Kohler. If you have a chance to add on and to score, uh, you've got to take it. So that's why Carter Caps is getting loose. Ichiro sets down a gorgeous putt. Real Muto on his way to second. And the sacrifice is successful. That is not easy. I think night in and night out we see players fail to get down sacrifices and Ichiro makes it look uh, just easy because he's practiced it a long time. That's a beautiful bunt. Well here's Miguel Rojas. Yeah. Tom Kohler scheduled. Cole Gillespie is on deck. Marlins calling up both Rojas and Gillespie from New Orleans after last night the injury to Giancarlo Stamp. Real Muto, big lead. Rojas takes down low. Donovan Solano was sent to New Orleans. A chance to get him some at bats and some regular playing time. Rojas has looked good defensively at third. He's bounced out twice. Ball in the strike. A Venezuelan. Signed as a teenager out of Venezuela with the Dodgers. He's hitting 302 in New Orleans with a 345 on base. His hero growing up was Omar Vizquel. And he always idolized the other Venezuelan shortstops. Be it uh, David Concepcion, Azikian. The scale was his guy. He's hopeful that his career in terms of offense takes the same turn it did for Viscell. Viscell early in his major league career was not much of an offensive player. The older he got the better he got. And Rojas in his last two years in triple A has hit over 300. That's a good sign. That's good progress because it, it shows you that he's he's not just saying well I'm a good defender. That he wants to work on his offense. Breaking ball shoots it to the right side. Kendrick gets the out. Two outs. On Thursday, Jose Fernandez makes his return. Marlins and Giants at 12 10 take advantage of discounted matinee pricing. Fans get a special Jose head giveaway and enjoy $1 hot dogs throughout the game. Marlins.com, you can secure your seats for Jose Day. And that game will be televised on. Fox Sports Florida. And Rich, I know what you and I are going to have for lunch that day. 
That's right, the traditional Cuban sandwich. From the taste of Miami. Rick Honeycutt out to talk to Kershaw. Now we turn our attention to a 31 year old outfielder, Cole Gillespie. Gillespie grew up in the Portland area, played his college ball at Oregon State. He was part of that run in which the Beavers won two consecutive national championships. He played on uh, the first one in 2006. And was drafted in the third round by the Brewers after that season. Big insurance run is 90 feet away with two outs. Yeah, Gillespie's put together a, a good resume in the minor leagues, and he's had some opportunities, not a lot, but he has had chances at the big league level. Ball and a strike. Major League time with Arizona, San Francisco, the Cubs, Seattle, and one game last year with Toronto. Hit 254 in Seattle in 34 games. Boy, that slider, now you see it, now you don't, it is devastating. Pitch number 101, eight strikeouts for Kershaw. Breaking ball in the dirt. Gillespie hustling. The throw to first just gets him. And that saves a run. Real Muto had already crossed the plate. Kershaw escapes 3 2 Miami after seven. Well, for the uh, Dodgers, it was Justin Turner in the first inning, his 11th home run of the year. That put them up one to nothing quickly. But the uh, Marlins were able to come back. They scored a base hit by Echevarria, then an errant throw from Ethier brought home Christian Yelich. A wild pitch brings home Echevarria, and the Marlins took the lead two to one. In the second inning, they added another ball hit hard by Tom Kohler off the glove of Peterson. He'd be charged with an error. The Marlins got their third run in the fourth inning. The Dodgers pick up their second on an RBI single off the bat of Adrian Gonzalez. Looked like the ball was lost in the lights by Yelich. So three to two is the score. That's the way it is right now. The Dodgers are going to have to face Carter Caps. And the Marlins bullpen is going to have to cut right through the heart of the Dodger order because Caps enters. 9-1-2. Looks like Alberto Callaspo, Jock Peterson, Howie Kendrick. 
Then you've got Turner, Gonzalez, and Ethier. So Mattingly has already used Yasiel Puig. Puig now in the ball game, sitting in the seventh spot in the order. Kayaspo, a plucky, versatile utility guy. One in there at 99. This time of the game, if uh, fans in the stands are alert, Carter Caps usually wakes him up a little bit. He's he's like your Cuban coffee in the eighth inning. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, the crowd looks at the uh, radar gun and they see 98, 99. They see some hundreds. The production truck just dove into their Cuban coffee. And that was uh, that was brief, wasn't it? Hi, how are you? <laughs> now it's 99 with the some nice uh, movement on it. On this date in Major League history, Geico makes a walk down memory lane. Jerry Royce faced just 28 hitters, and he no hit the Giants at Candlestick, which made it probably even more sweet for the Dodgers and Royce. Eight nothing. Left-hander Jerry Royce. Here's Peterson now. Caps misses. 100 miles an hour on that fastball. See the crowd. You can hear them. They're reacting to that. I know that Caps went down to the minor leagues to help iron out that delivery. Leap and then the throw and the drag of the toe now is much more pronounced. Maybe I'm imagining things, but he has come back a much more complete pitcher because well, of that yeah. the slider and the command of his fastball. You, do you get that sense? Well, I, I, I get that uh, completely. Uh, his command of the slider is much better than it was. Uh, in what we saw last year and certainly early this year. It's almost like ironing out that delivery issue has smoothed out everything else. Dodgers young center fielder is 0 for 3. JP Howell in the Los Angeles bullpen. Him outside corner. Not only has he gotten a lot of lefties by dropping that slider down and in, that time he fooled Peterson and found the outside part of the plate. So he goes back door with the slider, freezes Peterson on a perfect pitch. Oh, wow. It looks like the edge of the ball. Just up or off the black. Echeverria. Kendrick is out. Caps delivers. And this ball game moves to the bottom of the eighth. 3 2 Miami.
Hits and two errors for the Dodgers. Tuesday, 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup semifinals begin. Alex Morgan, Team USA, take on Germany with a trip to the final on the line. Coverage begins Tuesday at 6 Eastern on your local Fox station. You catch the whole tournament streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Into the semifinals for Team USA. Into the ball game for J.P. Howell. Nice part of that bullpen for the Dodgers. Here is Gordon. How misses in for Gordon. He's hit the ball hard all three times. Line to right, line to left, and then doubled over the head of the left fielder, Kike Hernandez. Tries to play, fouls it in the plate. In the meantime, he's made some spectacular defensive plays. Become ill on the field. He's helped his ball club hang on to a 3 2 lead. Last three years for J.P. Howell as a Dodger. We saw him with the Rays. Always that good left handed piece. 11 consecutive scoreless outings for Howell. So he's on a nice run. Kershaw seven innings, three runs, one earned, seven hits, nine strikeouts, no walks. Pitches in. Clayton Kershaw lost his last two starts coming into this one. You see Ramos in the bullpen. Kershaw has never in his career lost three consecutive starts. That's amazing. But if the Marlins hang on to this lead, that will change. Full count. Of course, the Dodgers come into this game. Two game lead over the Giants. And JP House strikes out D. Gordon. One out in the eighth. Here comes Yelich on a three for three afternoon. MLB.TV Premium gets you every out of market regular season game live or on demand in true HD. Watch at home in the office or on the go. Visit MLB.com for details. Yelich fouls it at the plate. A lot to like about Christian Yelich's day. He's three for three. And all three of those hits against Clayton Kershaw. Not many left handed bats can boast that. And you also loved his base running in the first inning on that looping single from Echeverria going first to third and then eventually scoring on the throwing error. in the dirt the day after the hand injury to John Carlos Stanton who just joined us broken hamate bone in his left hand four to six weeks Marlins will be without their all star right fielder well that day after the Marlins lineup Marcelo Zuna in the cleanup spot Yelich in the two spot and Danny Echeverria hitting third Two and two. You know, one name we haven't talked about today, not trying to replace Stan, but trying to act as part of the puzzle that the Marlins put out there is Michael Morse, who can play a corner outfield spot. The 2 2. Who at this point is getting close to coming back. He's been playing. In double A's and triple A now. And I know the, the ball club's thinking 
30 40 at bats they'd like to to have him get but uh, we could see him sooner. Marlins are hopeful that when he does get back he can shake off that slow start. Yelich cracks another one in the center field. You talked about it the other day the, the significance of about left handed at bats for Yelich against the left handed pitchers and how good he was last year. And I know you always preach sometimes for a lefty that's struggling. You get locked back in against lefties. Yeah, and the reason being is exactly what Christian has done today. Base hits up the middle. It's made him stay back. The hits against Kershaw, that one against Howell, stayed up the middle, drove the ball there. A four for four day for Yelich. Yelich at first, Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. Miami is into the Dodger bullpen. And they've just passed J.P. Howell and arrived at Yimi Garcia. The Marlins saw him at Dodger Stadium and roughed him up a little bit. Two thirds of an inning, gave up three hits and two runs. One of the big hits off Garcia in his outing in L.A. was a home run by Christian Yelich. Not many others are roughing him up. A 192 average against. He's second. National League relievers with 46 strikeouts. So you got speed at first with Yelich, you got Etchebri at the plate, and Yimi Garcia delivers. You know you're, you're going to see a Roldis Chapman at the top of that list, but probably you'd stump a lot of people asking who's second. Marlins just saw Kevin Segrist. Saw an AJ Ramos sighting. You know, the impressive thing about Ramos being on that list is he's not necessarily a power guy. He's not an upper 90s Rosenthal caps. Type stuff. Which I guess is a good illustration that stuff isn't always velocity. It's location, it's changing speeds. I'll tell you a closer that's that reminds me of AJ Ramos. Houston Street has had a really good career. Not an overpowering guy. I mean he throws lower 90s, a lot of sliders. Ramos got a little, a little more selection. Yeah, yeah, he does. Runner goes, swing and a foul tip, double clutch, throw down, he's safe. Grandall 
for whatever reason it may have been that the ball was tipped. A little bit of a hesitation and it looked like Yelich just got the hand under the Dodgers are obviously looking at it. Just a little extra to get the right grip a perfect throw by Grandal. Oh he's there and the hand on the back the tag up on the arm you can see Jimmy Rollins get that tag on the forearm arm but the back the hand was already on the back. Nice job by Yelich. Stolen base number six. I like the four move. Remember we talked about that with Gordon. The fingers up. And Echevarria swings it. Misses. Strikes out. You mentioned the 16 strikeouts last night. The Marlins have struck out 11 times here. Now Ozuna. Marcelo Ozuna is glad to see Clayton Kershaw out of the game. He struck out three times against Kershaw. Three of the nine for the reigning National League MVP. Two strikeouts his last two at bats last night. So five consecutive punch outs. And it's one and one. Justin Bohr emerging on deck. Yelich at second, two outs. Bottom eight. Hey, another guy we haven't talked to a lot about, Rich, as far as. Okay, Giancarlo's not in the lineup. He's not going to be there for a while. Is uh, Justin Bohr, who's on deck. That's why I thought of that because he had a tough month. He had a tough month of uh, June. But if he can get back into swinging the bat the way he did in the month of May, all of a sudden that helps out the lineup. Really, that's the way you've got to look at it if you're Bohr, Dietrich. Ozuna or Yelich or anybody else out there. This is the opportunity. Maybe more at bats for a guy like Bohr. It's an opportunity for Michael Morse when he comes back to fill a rather large need. And Ozuna strikes out again. Four strikeouts for Ozuna. Yelich left the second. Here comes Ramos. Trying to save it for Miami.
the Honda dealers. By Kubota, for more information, find a participating dealer, go to floridakubotadealers.com. By Florida Coast Equipment, Florida's largest Kubota dealer. Visit us at floridacoasteq.com and by Coral Springs Auto Mall. Across from the Coral Springs Mall, we make it easy. In Miami, 3-2, Marlins on top. Justin Turner got the Dodgers started. The Warren Henry drive of the game with a homer to left. That was against Tom Kohler in the first. And the Dodgers had a 1-0 lead. Marlins would erase it quickly with two in the bottom of the first. Kohler would tighten up and pitch seven really nice innings. Carter caps a scoreless eighth, and here is A.J. Ramos. Fantastic numbers for A.J. Look at the opposing batting average, 149. He's allowed just 17 base hits in his 33 and two-thirds innings. Turner takes out Turner kind of like a, a mini Manny Ramirez swing isn't it crowds the plate and then has that big leg kick from an open stance fouls that fastball back and it's one and one the Dodgers have three four five Turner Adrian Gonzalez and then the ever dangerous Andre Ethier, especially against Miami. You saw that uh, when you saw the line of A.J. Ramos, the one home run. Remember, that was that uh, devastating loss, that home run up in Canada, up in Toronto to Encarnacion. Session. They were the long men in this ball game. But two, they don't want to burn out too soon because if this game gets to extra innings, Miami may need them. Pitches out. And the count full three and two. Turner leading it off in the ninth. Miami up a run. Ball strike three call. Turner didn't like it. He turns to Tim Timmons, the home plate umpire. Here's a look. Saw a pretty good assortment of pitches. He's probably thinking that's a high pitch. It's a high strike if it's in the zone. But I'm sure Turner thinking, oh, ball four. But there's a high strike that's got plenty of Fox tracks and plenty of the strike zone. And well below the letters. There's Adrian Gonzalez. There's strike one. Gonzalez an RBI single in the fourth. And Ramos put off speed. 0-2. Ball and two strikes. You and I talk all the time about the assortment of pitches that AJ has, and that's why he's successful against both both lefties and righties. Fastball slider change and a curveball. And he gets Gonzalez. You gotta know somewhere. AJ Ramos good friend John Carlos Stanton is watching. Oh yeah. He got uh, a tough hitter 
with a good changeup down and away. Here is Ethier, the Marlin killer, who was 0 for 3. But what a win this would be for the ball club. What a win it would be for Tom Kohler. Ethier on the ground. Baker. Ball game. And a day after the Marlins lose their MVP, Christian Yelich goes four for four. Tom Kohler shuts down the Dodgers. Carter Caps and A.J. Ramos take care of the rest. And Miami evens this series at a game apiece. If ever there was a team in need of a feel good win, it was this one. And don't forget the efforts by D. Gordon defensively and at the plate. It was a nice effort all around. Uh, just a terrific team win. And as you talked about a couple of times, Rich, during the telecast, first time in his career, Kershaw has lost three in a row. Checkers brings you Marlins live after the game. Greg Minervini and Preston Wilson. Big day for Christian Yelich. As we talked about, it comes against Clayton Kershaw. Three of Yelich's four hits against Kershaw. He's only the second left handed hitter to ever have a three hit game against the three time Cy Young Award winner, joining Matt Carpenter. And the Marlins win it. Let's go down on the field. Enjoy Christian Yelich. Christian, congratulations. This is a, a really nice win for your ball club after a, a tough night last night. You know, uh, losing G, obviously that hurts us. Um, he's been one of the best players in baseball, you know, especially the last couple weeks. But uh, no one's going to feel sorry for us. And we just got to step up and, you know, kind of find different ways to win. Yelly, we talked about different players doing just that, stepping up. Tell us about your approach today against a real tough pitcher in Kershaw. Yeah, you know, he's really tough. Um, I remember facing him um, my rookie year, uh, and I got dominated up there. And you, know, you got to just look at what happened um, a couple years ago and kind of just make some adjustments. And he's tough, so you're kind of just battling all day. And you know, I got lucky; a couple balls found some holes. Uh, I hit one off of him, uh, and you know, that's what you kind of got to do against him in battle. Christian, I thought one of the key plays of the ball game early was you going from first to third. On the base hit by Adani Echevarria, that really forced the Dodgers' hand, and it, it almost seemed like without John Carlo, you guys are going to have to do a little more of that. Yeah, you know, especially with a guy like Kershaw on the mound, you got to you got to be aggressive and kind of just um, be aggressive on the base pass and, and try and create your own luck. And you know, that's what we were able to do today. And uh, great job by Tommy. You know, he, you know, pitched really well today, and then Caps came in and, and Ramos shut the door. Boy, the pitching was outstanding. Uh, Rich and I talked about. Uh, a, a guy uh, like Tom Kohler has the perfect attitude to step up in a game like this after what happened yesterday with G. Yeah, you know, that was huge. Um, he did a great job, you know, gave up that homer early and he kind of shut him down from there. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For you personally, lefty at bats against the lefty, and you talked about your approach against Kershaw. You often hear sometimes a left hand hitter say, it's the at bats against the lefty that gets you going. Does that happen to you sometimes? Um, you know, I think it kind of forces you to be, you know, shorter and simplify your approach. You know, you can't really do too much against lefties. You got to stay in there on that curveball, especially, um, you know, a guy like Kershaw has got a really good slider, uh, really good curveball. So uh, you, got, you can't do too much. Just be short to the ball. And, uh, you know, sometimes that helps you out. Well, terrific win for the ball club. Nice performance. Congratulations. Enjoy it. We'll see you again tomorrow. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, Four hits job. for Christian Yelich and Miami. A run better than the Dodgers evens this series at a game of peace. Marlins Live is coming up. 3-2 Miami beats the Dodgers.